<laughs> this is great. Everybody all set? Yeah. Kung, I guess everybody first and foremost is wondering what you're doing after that amazing knockout of Rich Franklin. Actually, uh, I had two elbow surgeries and I'm just taking my time recovering and uh, I'm back in training, but very, you know, specific type of training to rehab and strengthen the other part of my body. So it's like when people say, work around your injuries, I'm working around my injury right now, making sure that I don't re-injure anything again before I, you know, get back in the mix. Well, in the mix, consider, was Anderson Silva. That was something that everybody was talking about. How close was that to really happening? How'd you feel about that possibility? Well, it, it was close coming from um, you know, Anderson's manager, but I, I didn't know. And like, I, I must have got a dozen phone calls. Hey, did you see what uh, Anderson's camp said? I said, no. And then so I just got online and checked it out. I usually try to stay off, you know, the Internet and... And uh, so I checked it out. I'm like, oh, well, maybe it might happen. I'll, I'll do a rush job and hurry up like I did against uh, Rich. And it just didn't happen. So I was, uh, maybe it was meant to be for me to really recover because, you know, after, um, you know, the uh, Patrick Cote fight, I was pretty banged up. Mainly, I started uh, in training camp and just had a little injuries and then just kept pushing, pushing. And then after the Patrick Cote, I was like, okay, now, I, and uh, you know, I, I'm going to take some downtime. Next thing I know, Dana's off. Uh, we need you for Macau. I'm like, oh, China, I got to do it. So I just jumped in and, and then pushed hard and worked around my injuries and, and uh, got it done. How do you think you would have matched up with Anderson, though, if that had come to fruition? I don't know, but I would have just went in there and, uh, you know, um, pedal to the metal and just no fear. Whatever happens is going to happen anyway, so why fight scared? You know, injuries mounting up, you know, in your career, you've not taken a lot of damage, but you are a little bit older. Um, the career, uh, as far as you see it, what do you want out of this? Is it is, is title the end game or is it exciting fights? What exactly are we after at this point? Right now, it's just uh, one fight at a time. And if it does come up, if I'm, you know, if I keep my win streak on, then, then I would be up for it. But other than that, I want the super mega fights, you know, out of the country and, and or here, wherever, it just like, it just, it, it was definitely fun being the main event in China and uh, just uh, headlining for the first time for UFC and in China was uh, just uh, such an amazing feeling and um, I couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, I felt like, you know, if I did end on that note, it'd be great, but, you know, when you have a great performance like that, being injured and uh, just realizing that I'm able to execute a game plan, study tape, which I really didn't do much before. I remember you um, said that to me in a previous then, conversation. Yeah, it's not one of your things you're too keen on. Yeah, and now by studying tapes, you know, every time Rich threw a kick and his hands drop, I was like, oh, I see it. I saw it in the tape, and and uh, it all worked out good. And and uh, right now I'm just uh, taking my time, and uh, you know, I actually started a little uh, movie project for my uh, buddy. He wrote a script for me. And uh, we got, yeah, he got it picked up by uh, a, um, some company, and they're going to produce it. And it was, it was with Dolph and uh, a few other actresses uh, that's about to get signed. And I'm the lead in the movie, and it's like an action drama. It's like heavy acting, but I do get to throw a lot of guys on their heads. So pretty it's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, and as far as the tape thing, I guess that goes against the old saying, you can't teach uh, older dogs new tricks? Not at all. You, you, you can always learn, especially when a dog is open-minded. You say that you know it's tough to walk away after having such a great performance like that, but then nobody ever wants to walk away on a loss either. Everybody always wants to get that one more. Uh, so I mean, do you think you'll you'll know? Okay, here's where I, I should I should stop, or do you think that that's going to be a tough one to, to call? I think you know just going through it like every day instead of like thinking so far ahead. Whatever the day brings then you just go with it. And if, if you, like for me, if I think too far ahead and then something happens, like I get injured and, uh, you know, like training camp nowadays, it's everything's really like for against Rich. I had one hard sparring session and that was it. The rest, the rest time was simulation, a lot of cardio because it was a five round fight. So I really pushed the cardio, just worked on my technique. And um, it, it definitely, it definitely helped um, my uh, longevity as as a fighter, and before when I was younger, I used to just train through injuries and just push, 
did I didn't care if my shoulder was bothering me. I still punch on it now. Like something bothers me, I wouldn't work. I'll stay off that, but I would definitely work other parts of, you know, my body. Is there any worry with the, with the with the going over the tape and the game planning that you lose some of your spontaneity, in the cage? Not really. Um, I think going over the game plan, uh, you 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 know you work on the moves that might um, connect and find the openings for that moves you know to to break down his weakness but at the same time you can't just throw that move all the time you have like for me I have a whole arsenal of moves so eventually I I put it together in practice and I how I practice is how I perform and that's my like kind of like how I live by my training and eventually when um, if that technique doesn't find some another technique might open it up then that technique will find its spot and and that's that's how I I kind of train whenever it's like I can't just throw my spinning back kick because they'll see it coming. But what if I ca camouflage it with a, a bunch of different techniques and then hit the spinning back kick? Then then it's there for me. The fight with Vanderlei was incredible. Did you know in the moment that that fight was as good as it was and that it would be one of those fights that people talked about for so long? Actually, Vanderlei came up with a great game plan, and I think. Um, after that fight, I, I realized I got to study more tape because I watch all all of Van Lee's, uh, f like greatest hits and and I, I was expecting the the, the old Van Lee to show up and which he did show up at the end. But I, I felt like in the beginning when I just just threw my stuff and not worried about you know what what he was gonna do. I was just focused on taking in the openings, you know, with Van Lee. And next thing I know, Van Lee started backpedaling and. Through the whole, my whole camp, I had King Mo coming at me the whole time, so I never had to fight anyone on the back pedal. And all of a sudden, I was like, "Hey, what's going on?" You know, it's it's it, it it was just he threw me completely off my game plan, and then you know I try to you know walk him down. Who walks down Vanley? You know, and then uh, I got caught. So you know, and uh, so you know I, I I live and learn, and uh, it's just uh, you know. I, I I I've been in enough fights to to realize I should have just stayed back and not try to you know please the fans so much and try to do these crazy moves. But you know I learned from it. The crazy move is gonna come anyways because every time I throw something, some crazy move always follows. So I shouldn't worry about it at that time. And I think oh being in San Jose, I gotta really make the fans happy. And and it ended up. Uh, Ended up in the hospital with a broken nose, so no more of that. But I was happy; it was an amazing fight. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> yeah. a afterwards, he told us that uh, he actually improved your acting career. He made you look more like a tough guy. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, <laughs> he actually helped me in a different way because my nose is more straight than it was before because that was my third nose break. So, but uh, you know, he, he can be funny about that. <laughs> no, no, no hard feelings, you know. You know, I, I, you know, how I see it is, I'm one of very few uh, fighters that can cross, and I'm, I feel like, for me as, as a UFC fighter, and for me as an actor, who else would be able to work with like, greats like, uh, you know, Donnie Yen and Master Wu Ping, who's done The Matrix and Kill Bill, and then be a part of uh, a Quentin Tarantino production and work with like RZA and Russell Crowe and just so many great actors and you know I just uh, I just met with some awesome um, producers and and um, directors recently uh, I don't want to mention one director right now but um, you know, I think it'll be announced pretty soon um, and it, it's crazy it's not even an action project um, but you know, in two weeks, I, I meet with uh, Academy Award-winning producer Bill Kong, uh, from uh, who got the Academy Award for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and he's flying in to, you know, just chat with me. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And you know, I feel blessed. I, every day I wake up, I'm I'm always motivated to do something because, you know, I get to do what I love, which is still compete at a high level in the octagon and and also work with the best of the best. Do you have a number in mind? Is there a countdown? Uh, or is it just a, you know, your age, the, the career? It's been a long career from Sancho to Strike Force to here. Is there a number that you have in your head, or is it? Just well, it, it's all going to depend on like when I start sparring again. See how everything holds up. Right now, I'm lifting, I'm doing my sprints, and I'm working my cardio. I haven't grappled yet. 
but uh, you know, I started hitting some pads, hitting bags. Everything's feeling good. Like the first couple of sessions, it was sore for like a week. Then the next session, it was sore for like three days. And now it's sore the next day. And so it's like, it's really healing. So I don't want to rush back and all of a sudden re-injure it again. Then I'm out for another six weeks. That that's being injured is the most frustrating thing for for me as an athlete because I can't do what I love. I, I can't go in there and I, I go and coach my guys and they're sparring and I, I get the you know I get like the itch. the itch and it's almost like my like I'm going through withdrawals and it's 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 hard it's just to sit there and coach and then and then I see all this opening out oh, to kick at him this way throwing him this way but it is what it is. I'd say that's a sign of a true fighter. Yeah. Yeah, so I just I, I do my best to represent. UFC and, and the martial arts uh, fans of the world and the martial artists of the world and all the arts and uh, just one step at a time. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Nice to see you. Thank you.